So, Dr. Omar, the first question is, how is economic inequality slash injustice looked at from an Islamic perspective? Um, in Hadith Jibreel, the angel Gabriel comes to the Prophet وسلم, <coughs> and this is at the very end of the Medinan period and the companions see him which indicates to you how great the companions are and he asks the four questions what is Islam, what is Iman, what is Ihsan and then when will the hour be <coughs> and that last question when he asked it, the Prophet said, لَيْسَ الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ That the one who's asked this question, namely the Prophet wasallam, is not more knowledgeable than the one asking it, namely Gabriel. So the knowledge of the hour is just for God alone. And you can't figure it out. You can't triangulate it. So then he says, وَمَا أَشْرَاتُهَا so what are its signs? <clears throat> and among its signs is that the maid servant will give birth uh, to her mistress or to her master. In other words, and that has different meanings, but one of them is that children will be like masters and mothers will be like slaves. That's one of the standard meanings of it. And then that you see the barefoot, naked, poor Bedouins, herders of sheep and camel, camels competing with each other in building tall buildings. That's the second one that he gave. So <clears throat> all of these signs of the end of time and all negative signs of the end of time, because you also have positive ones, they all indicate fundamental injustice and disorder and the breaking up of the immutables the things that are not supposed to change so why would a child treat their mother as a slave because they're not properly educated because they're not taught <coughs> the honor of the mother and the father and because they're not taught other things as well so they become the kind of children that we actually see in my country all the time who treat their mother as if she were worse than a slave and curse at her and make her cry and you get this for me and you get that for me and they're never thankful for anything so <clears throat> this is um, breaking up the immutables so the way that elders are supposed to be treated and parents are supposed to be treated that's not happening anymore so you have a big problem with education and with tarbiya. And then you have Bedouins, barefoot, naked, um, poor, competing with each other and building tall buildings. Like you see in Riyadh and you see in Dubai and you see in Doha and you see in these other countries. Okay, so what does that mean? It means economic injustice and political injustice. Because how did all of this money come to be concentrated in so few hands? You see? So that means you have another immutable which has been changed, which is social and political and economic justice. So that's what Islam tells us about these things that we're asked about. And <coughs> they're... they're we have an obligation to establish social, political, and economic justice. Are we able to do that? Well, we're in an extremely difficult situation today. But we have to do the best that we can do with what we have, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala. And we have to understand the time we live in. But we see the Bedouins competing in the building of tall buildings. And in my country, you see children treating their, their parents, you know, worse than slaves. <clears throat> uh, in Islam, um, justice and a sound political system is 
one of the greatest prizes of all. But as the Prophet said وسلم, in the signs of the end of time, that Islam would be taken apart, urwa, urwa. You know, one rung, one rung or not hold by another. And the first to go would be the hukam. The first would be political rule. And the last to go would be salat. So, you know, we have the salat, alhamdulillah. We have the fast, alhamdulillah. Um, and we desire social, political, and economic justice. And may God give us that. But that's a very tall order in bad times. And you have to do the best that you can do with what you've got. Uh, shall we take the next question? 